Evan, tonight we're learning more about efforts behind the scenes to get a plea deal in the Cipriano murder case. We reported last week that the family wants to avoid reliving the horror of last year, the brutal crime that left Bob Cipriano dead and his wife and son badly beaten. 7 Action News reporter Jim Kirchner is here now. Jim, what can you tell us about this new information? Jeff and Joanne, the prosecutor filed this brief to get a gag order in this case, silencing the Cipriano family. But inside this is a transcript of Greg Cipriano talking with his nephew inside the Oakland County Jail in May about a plea deal. Also new tonight, the family has a strong voice in their corner. I think she's making a mockery of the fact that she's the victim's lawyer. He's talking about Oakland County Prosecutor Jessica Cooper, Patterson's political nemesis, who has said no plea deal for Tucker Cipriano and friend and co-defendant Mitchell Young, both about to go on trial for murder and attempted murder. Both have confessed to beating Bob Cipriano to death and critically beating Rose and younger brother Salvatore. Rose Cipriano had written asking the prosecutor to plea bargain the case, and if that did not happen, that Rose, her other son Tanner, who hid in his bedroom during the attacks, and nine-year-old Isabella, who tried to defend her parents but was not injured, be left off the witness list. They are on. Putting a nine-year-old on the stand who could be traumatized for life by that experience. Patterson spent 16 years as elected Oakland County prosecutor and three in the office before that. He says family testimony is not necessary given the confessions and a mountain of evidence. It hurts what we call cumulative testimony. It just goes on as to what was already testified to. So she's not really that necessary. They're basically being assaulted a second time. That's last week, the brother of the murder victim, an attorney, and on the witness list, talking before the judge issued the gag order. According to a jail transcript of Greg talking with his nephew Tucker on May 17th, Greg says he talked with an assistant prosecutor. The prosecutor does not want to offer you a plea. I took a pretty strong position against the prosecutor about that uh, to the point where the prosecutor suggested that I was obstructing justice, in other words, trying to ruin the case. Gray goes on to say, I made it very clear to him that if he does not offer a plea, that the family will not participate in the trial. And, now I don't want to know what you have on your mind about a plea offering, I'm just telling you what's happening. Tucker's replies are blacked out. Greg goes on, we will do everything within our power to expose the prosecutor for being heartless. They say it's in the public's interest. This is not a public interest case. This is a family matter. The 7 Action News has learned the former prosecutor met with Greg Cipriano yesterday. She can say, uh, you know, I disagree with you. I'm giving you my best legal advice as the prosecuting attorney. However, if, if you insist that my office take a plea to second degree, I represent you. That's you think she should do that? I do. That's what I would do. Now, I got a response text from the prosecutor this afternoon that says we are not going to make any public statements until the jury has rendered its verdict. She called Patterson's comments uninformed and adds they won't be baited into a response. Jeff, Joanne? Well, good job, Jim. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the jury selection. It's going on now. Anticipation for the trial to begin. When is that? They have to see two juries, but they believe they will get that done by Friday. Opening statements tentatively set oh, for that Friday. That only gives them tomorrow and Thursday. They think they can do that in two days with such a, a high-profile case. Yep. All right. Jim, thank you. We'll wait and see. Yeah.